Hello everybody! Welcome to Something Political's new video. In our last two video series, we briefly covered the theories of realism and liberalism in international relations. Although our channel is still tiny and our content is slowly growing, we thank you for your interest in our channel and our videos. Your support means a lot to us. So, after this emotional intro, now it is time to take a look at the Marxist theory in IR as we promised in our last video. First and foremost, the most basic and simplistic definition of the theory is that Marxism is the critique of capitalism. We define capitalism as an economic system and a system of economic relations. Capitalism supports the free market economy, right to private property and social relations based on these properties. Capitalism also commodifies human labor that is bought and sold on the market. This concept is known as commodification. Marxism argues that such a system produces a class-based society. This class structure consists of the bourgeoisie that owns the means of production, namely capital, and the proletariat that is the labor. As a result of this class-oriented system, the bourgeoisie accumulates wealth while the proletariat remains the same. It is never possible for the proletariat to become bourgeoisie one day since they can never own the means of production, the capital. And this is the starting point of all the problems in the world, class struggle. According to Marxism, there are three causes of war, capitalism, imperialist rivalry and race for colonization which altogether leads to a heavy class struggle. According to the Marxist ideology in IR, to assess the constant struggle between classes, we need to investigate the relationship between agency and the structure. Here, the agency represents the workers and the worker groups, while the structure represents the state as a part of the capitalist system. From the IR perspective, we can say that there are three main arguments of the Marxist ideology. First, it sees human nature as a historical product of material conditions. If human nature is greedy and self-interested, it is because of the material conditions that humans live in and not natural conditions. If we were to abolish capitalism, we could see a different human nature, Therefore, an alternative international system would have been possible. The second argument of Marxism is about the expansionist nature of capitalism. Capitalism works beyond borders to accumulate and maximize wealth. New markets are important for capitalism due to the system's heavy reliance on natural resources for production. The capitalist element in the system constantly looks for new national resources to secure itself and that creates imperialism and colonialism in which weaker states and societies are exploited by their more powerful versions. The last key argument of Marxism in IR is related to the state notion. Marxism sees the state as an autonomous actor who still acts as an instrument of the bourgeoisie. According to this line of thought, it is also argued that the capitalist system and the modern state system are the two sides of the same coin. The modern state represents the bourgeoisie. Due to the state's dependence on private investment, it must serve the interest of the capitalist class. In the case of a revolution, the state inevitably turns into the hands of workers. And in the end, it would be destroyed entirely since a classless society, a community society, would not need a state to exist. So, that brings us to the end of this very short video about Marxism in IR. We will continue with the prominent figures of the Marxism in our next videos. If you liked this video, please do not forget to like it, and for our other videos, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.